Oh, finally, I know, right? Well, Boomerang is back, and I'm not too sad about it being back, because I think the last one I made a couple pretty obvious mistakes. For example, not throwing out multiple Boomerangs at once, despite the fact that I took the two times ammunition thing. I t Which, it w even when I was, I was watching that video, it was just like, man, I really screwed that up super hard. Well, it, as it turns out, you can get about two Boomerangs out or so before... You know, they're already coming back to you, and you are not, and you won't be able to get behind an enemy. So, it wasn't the worst thing, but it was pretty much a waste of mutation slot that entire time. Uh, another thing with doing the boomerang is that you're pretty squishy. Tactics is now the low health sort of uh, stat to be taking. So, even if you have high damage, stuff like that happens, for example. Ah, well, easy come, easy go. And although I think you can get some pretty good damage out of the boomerang, even if you're using some very nice synergies, which I had pointed out in the comments last time, a phaser is just amazing with the boomerang. The skill ceiling required to use the boomerang well doesn't get you much more damage than just getting a good synergy with a basic bow or spell or anything like that. And the other thing is that Boomerang does have a limited amount of range. I was I was originally hypothesizing in the first video that it was based on how many enemies, how many hits it dealt out, but it seems to be that what happens is that after the Boomerang travels a set distance, it will just disappear. Which is too bad, because I think that you could... Ooh, that's close. It's just too bad, because I think that you could get some pretty... It would be actually a pretty cool sort of keep away game that you could be playing if you were able to get the boomerang to swing around you and into enemies while you're also hitting them with a normal melee weapon and everything. But with a limited range, it's not nearly as effective. And here, one of the big things with this run was that, okay, get 20 tactics and then just put everything else into health because otherwise the health would be too bad. I got, uh, well, it was a three-hit combo, but it was one very quick, very swift death that I think I showed in the, uh, Alchemic Rifle video. And that was pretty emblematic of all of the attempts that I'm doing here. Where it's not too difficult in the game, but then the second you get into the castle, everything's doing so much damage, and everything's so difficult to get around and all that, that, uh, it's just, it's too hard, you know? For, for using at least a pure tactics sort of build. I mean, ultimately, I think that the pure tactics sort of build is suited for doing as much damage as possible and don't get hit, period. As if you were doing a Cursed Sword run or something, which you definitely could do with Cursed Sword run. It does scale with tactics. <laughs> I grabbed a KO shield there, for example, just so I would have some more, just a little bit more tankiness to my character right now. And in a little bit, I will also be grabbing a phaser, which will be uh, invaluable against the hand uh, in the upcoming hand fight. Well, maybe not invaluable, but at least it will give a very good idea of just how well you can utilize the boomerang if you if you are using a, a phaser with it. I mean, obviously, you get the most damage as you're coming backwards and getting behind an, and just uh, hitting a skill button to get behind an enemy is a very good way to. Make sure that it has the most distance to cover as possible. Obviously, it's not super easy to get since it's very, very expensive. Boomerang does do a little bit of damage hitting it from the front, but it seems like it's so little that unless you're trying to do it for the stun potential, I don't think it's really worth it in any way. Yeah, to that point about the, the keep away ga uh, game thing earlier. Uh, one of the series that I really, really got to be finishing soon enough, I mean, come on, for real, is a playthrough of uh, Indie Game Purple, which the main character has a very, very similar sort of, like the basic attacks for the basic weapon that you have in that game, very similar to the boomerang. And one of the neatest things I think in that game is a boss fight where what you would do is... You would throw your, uh, well, it's a frisbee specifically, against the wall and then get it to circle around you to hit a boss because that was the only way that you could do damage without taking damage yourself. And I think that it would just be a, 
I, I, well, first off, I would like to just utilize those skills in multiple ways again, but knowing that the boomerang would eventually disappear really does kind of disabuse you of the idea that you'd be able to play that sort of, uh, like, almost a sub-game in itself. And I would really like to see if they did have a bit more... If this did do a bit more damage to kind of encourage that as well. As it is, it kind of feels like it's... It's a lot like an Aura of Laceration, where you get a bunch of little tiny hits, and if you get good synergy on that, that's great. But I think I would rather just have a decent turret. A decent turret would work a lot better than... Also, it's a very situational weapon, you can see. A decent turret would work a lot better than a boomerang in a lot of situations. Also, yeah, it's hard to use it in a lot of situations, too. Like, the that close quarters there was to... Well, close quarters to be able to effectively use the boomerang, so I had to... So I had to uh, just throw it in the Lancer's face there to try to get it to work, and... Uh, didn't work as well as I wanted it to. Oh well, at least I can get the phaser. I was really seriously considering getting that denial wave, though, because that would be a very good weapon against the hand. Uh, we'd get rid of all of his grenades, but... You know, also doesn't really do that much damage, and the phaser is so much cooler. So I think that as far as this build goes, it works better. I did grab all three because... <laughs> after losing that heart to the... After losing the heart mutation to the, the dual tracker fight... It just felt like, well, I'm going to need some sort of edge in this upcoming battle, because otherwise I don't know how good of a chance I would stand against the hand. Especially because the hand is... he is a big character, so it's hard to get stuff behind him in the first place. He has passive blocking and projectiles, so I don't think that counts for the boomerang in any way. But it is kind of annoying. Also, one of the most annoying things about this fight is that it will get caught up on the hand even when he's invincible, when he calls out his, uh, his ad, the, the, the ad portion of the fight. But aside from that, I mean, it's just do as much damage as possible with the boomerang. Oh, and looks, and yeah, something I didn't even notice at the time was that, uh, barreling through the his shield doesn't seem to actually get him hit on the back end which is too bad because that's a lot of damage that I don't get then or at least it's pretty inconsistent maybe he's only unable to be hit when he is dashing not when he's preparing it ah who knows Well, at least, you know, you're getting decent damage, but the hand is also just so tanky that it doesn't really matter. This is also definitely a hard part of the game. I would think that, I would say that actually the... Trying to get rid of these elites with a sort of weird weapon like this is... Is one of the harder parts. Actually, any weapon. I, I, uh, the most of the trouble I have with the hand fight, I think, is doing the... Is doing the uh, add parts. Because it is just hard to effectively... Hit adds and four other uh, enemies at the same time, even if you do know all of their attacks and where they're coming from all the time. Also, I noticed there that apparently I uh, parried one of the banner explosions, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. <laughs> like, how does that... Because I'm fairly certain you can't parry, like, a shocker explosion or anything, so what's the deal with that? At least the boomerang's pretty good at taking out the... I'm pretty good at taking out the banners, provided that, you know, they're not the first thing that you hit with them, that you're getting them on the backswing. Yeah, you can see the hand is barely lo losing any health, even as I'm throwing out tons and tons of boomerangs all the time. Thankfully didn't get a slasher here this time. I think it's probably based on what the cell level you're at, and since I'm only at cell level 1, you get like an ugly worm as an elite. But on cell level 4, you're getting a, uh, 
a slasher elite down there, which is much more irritating to deal with, certainly. Yeah, they gotta beat both of these elites, or I think it's just a, a certain amount of time and the hand will come back down. Yep, okay, it is a certain amount of time. I couldn't remember that. At least I, at least uh, my uh, plan of getting pretty tanky is helping a decent amount. Because otherwise I'm fairly certain that I would have been murdered ten times over at this point. Yeah, it's hard to say. A lot of the future showcase, challenge runs, whatever, would be on, you would be using a lot of tactics weapons, and I don't know how possible it would be to do this if I went on high cell difficulty like I would with a melee weapon. I guess I'm just gonna have to see as it kind of comes to that. I guess I did manage to finish it with two flash charges left, so it wasn't too bad, but at the same time, it was a lot more difficult than it probably would be with just about any other weapon that I could use. So I think a boomerang overall is a really cool idea, but I also think that is it is a weapon that isn't as good as I would like it to be.